slide. Okay. If hundred percent of you know, I don't have to cover that. I can go on to the next part. So, who is that? Can you raise your hand? Because I cannot make up. Who doesn't know how to convert? And who knows how to convert? Who doesn't know? So, basically, you don't know how to convert. Okay. Okay. So, none of you can use. So, you have not used your MS YouTube account at all. Have you? Like, none of you have uploaded on your YouTube. Okay. No one knows about your new license. Okay. Regarding licensing, right? There is. Do you remember the body talk form? We have discussed Creative Commons and OER. Okay. What is? What have you understood from Creative Commons? What have you understood of the concept of Creative Commons? Can you use really? Okay. In when we do when you attend the IDP course on. Uh, content duration, we will show you how to get your Creative Commons license. So ideally, you have CC0. CC0 means you upload your picture online, all your material, everyone can copy, reload, reshare without attributing you. It's a CC0. For example, if you go to the site Pixabay with the images, you see all images of sunset and sunrise, you can download and share because it's CC0. You have to check the attribution. However, what we follow in UMS is CCBY. CCBY means you are the owner of that copyright or you are the owner of that content. Okay, so suppose somebody, uh, for example, you find uh, Gambar on the online, which is CCBY, means you can download, you can use for a slide, you can upload to YouTube, but you need to attribute the original author. So remember something, when you are employed by UMS, all the material is actually attributed to you. So if you leave UMS and go to another university, it's still attributed to you, even though it's mostly at UMS. So that's the idea of CCBY. Now in YouTube, there are two kinds of licenses. Okay. If you check on YouTube, some videos you can download freely. Okay. And some got restricted content. Like usually if it's some uh, rock music artists or pop artists, they, we cannot download the video. Because that is standard YouTube license. But when we upload on YouTube, we actually use the CCBY license. CCBY means you can upload your material. So suppose there's another lecture in, for example, in Russia, or America, he wants to download your video and use it in his class, he can download it. Now you will ask me something, you are giving everything away free, what's the benefit for you? You get citation. So when you go upload a video, we have a system in UMS. Today I cannot go into that, very deeply into that because we are limited time, but I will show you how to create content and upload into YouTube. Later on I will show you how to link that content to OER open educational uh, resources. So once it is in the OER, basically you get, uh, it becomes a citation on your Google Scholar. So you come up with your Google Scholar as a citation. Well, it is content. It's not a publication, but it's content. So you can count. So when we do, have you heard of MyraScore? Uh, we have uh, MyraScore, right? Whenever you have uh, upload there, if it's related to your research, it's basically considered as a Myra point. It's like publication. They have uh, what is that? Uh, was it right? Uh, they have like Scopus ISI, and this is below our outside uh, this category. So you can use this for your CV as well. That's why content creation is very important. The, the third reason why we do basically content creation is something known as institutional capacity building. So have you seen the <coughs> ranking of the university? Okay. What determines the ranking? What determines the ranking of the university? Okay, publication, engagement, grants, and something very important which is known as web metric. You know what's web metric? Okay, so when we create content on YouTube, okay, we deposit it at an open access website, open access, everyone download or watch. Every time they click, UMS gets a web metric mark on the web metric. So, by doing this, right, we are actually doing institutional capacity building. Because we are creating more coverage for UMS. That's what we are trying to do. So, we create more coverage for UMS, the ranking goes up. Okay. So, if we don't do that, it's basically the best. Because, see, for example, you are recording a lecture. There's no harm in uploading it. Provided you did not say anything controversial. I mean, we have certain ethical right? code of ethics. If provided we follow everything, discipline, ethical, we upload. It's going to get more and more views. So you get a uh, citation and web metry by putting up your lecture online. <coughs> so this is a very good way to uh, boost your career and also to help UMS to increase the ranking. Okay, that's why we are doing it. 
So earlier in the earlier days when we didn't have all this fancy, now we have video camera and all this software. We just use the hand, the cam. We just you can install your camera and then you can record. Uh, but don't use iPhone X. You know what? Because iPhone X and all those have very high frame rate, and then your memory is very large and your upload time is longer. Use the basic camera with lower memory rate. And so now I will basically guide you the process of making a video using PowerPoint. So PowerPoint has a function for making videos. How many of you all have used PowerPoint video function? Can you raise your hand? No one has used. Okay. So yesterday I prepared a template for you for PowerPoint. So that's the basic template. It's the first video which we will make. Have you all prepared anything? Ready to the template. So today when you go home, it will just take you three minutes. You can basically do the template. So how to do it like this? So this is my Kamta. I just made a Kamta example. This is not a real course. It's a course which I created. The number exists, but I just put a material inside. So it's easy to create. How will you convert this into video? Can you guess? There are, there are three ways to do it. One is you put the camera up there. <laughs> it works. It works. I've done it many times. It works. But the quality will be bad. It won't be good enough to read. You can see, you hear your voice, but the quality is very bad. Second one is to use what Dr. Luke suggested. We can give you the software called Screencastify and you can or you can download it. Tomorrow, if, if you all have a little bit of time, if you all need any help, you can come to me. I'll show you how to do that. But it will take time. I don't want to confuse overload. So today, I will just teach you the basic using. Uh, PowerPoint system. Okay. So if you look at PowerPoint and your slide is all ready, you will see a button here which says record slideshow. Have you encountered, have you ever wondered what it comes in? So it records your slideshow as it occurs, as you record. Okay, so I'll give you an example. So give me three minutes. Okay. I'll stand in front of you and I'll do the recording for you for this particular slide. Okay, so this is how I'll do it. So Usually the older, your new generation computers, right, they don't require additional microphone. If you sit in your room and speak, <coughs> like and record it will be okay. But the older generation, you have to have a Android microphone because it will not pick up the voice. Okay. So I will try, I have not tried it with this system, but I will try. So what I do is like this, so you click record slideshow and you start recording. <coughs> now don't worry about your voice. <laughs> this is the biggest, if you have, have anybody has Embarrassed, uh, voice? I don't, I don't have my voice. You don't like Okay, don't worry. The first time, okay. How, how do you work out your voice? Okay, who's first? I will show you how to work out the fear of your voice. Okay, we did it when we were kids in school. Uh, our teachers came You know, earlier we had tape recorder. Our teacher said, record your voice. Listen to it. Well, the first time you will be afraid because your voice is not so good. Second time, but over three, four times, you will basically develop confidence. Don't worry about your voice. No, it's not the confidence, but I think it's still the system. So I know my, I, I really like my voice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's inside, inside the computer, it becomes horrible. Or uh, in a TV or something like that. That's because we are not all of us are sitting around. But I think my real voice is good. Yeah, that's what, because you are not adjusting the equipment. Uh, 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 the equalizer, equalizer. So for the for the Lelaki Swara, you require higher bass. They have bass and higher to reduce. For Brahman, you it's worse. Oh. You have to adjust that. There's an equalizer system in there, so you have to adjust that. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Because at the center, right? If you, are, if you want to do this yourself, just call us. We will help you. Okay, we will show you how to do this thing. That's our, uh, I mean, that's our service for India to do it. It's our duty. Okay, so let's see how we do this. So let's test this microphone. I don't know whether it's going to work with the system. So what you do is you record slideshow. Start slideshow from the beginning. Now remember something about a slideshow. You should have put in the transition. You know, the slide transition. You need to put in the transition. So I'm going, I'm going to show you how to do it. So you go to transition. Select any transition and you apply it all. If you want to change, you can change, but this is the basic transition. Okay, so then I go to slideshow, record slideshow. Okay. So I will do an actual recording so you know how it's done. So just you will get more but I start recording. So I start recording. So don't worry about making mistakes because 
when you record that, you can actually edit our voice as well. There's a way to do it. So we'll start recording. So hello and welcome to the course on plant molecular biology. This, this course is part of your program on molecular biology. This course will be brought to you by Mr. Wilson Young Taolin and Kenneth Rodriguez. So when you speak about the introduction, right? Don't uh, don't read the paraphrase because there's no test time. You read in your own voice. Okay, and you just think. So although I have put it like this, so uh, molecular biology, in plant molecular biology is an emerging field, it's developing and then it's uh, offers a career scope. You just talk about it. But the introduction, what you show on the board, is the bulk of your table three. This is a requirement. So you put it up as follows. So you put it Okay, so these are your course objectives. We introduce the course objectives. You have to read them out. And then your course learning outcomes. You tell them what the course learning outcomes. <coughs> and you uh, tell them you can discuss the course topics. So lectures 1 to 4 will focus on design, change, construct. Lecture 4 to 5, just talk about it. Now, if you have developed your YouTube videos, you can link them directly to these things. Them and then you get your course, your, your videos. Okay, so then you tell them you are doing the SS on the basis of your course yeah, using these parameters. Your course will be delivered by using uh, online lecture, all these things you say. And then these are your contact details. And finally, you tell them about the tutorial. Okay. So now your course is free. And then ready to save. So now I'm going to save it. So okay, I escape. After I click this, I escape. The machine is a bit slow. Recording, so it's okay, so, so while waiting there, while uh, waiting to work for the machine, we are processing the voice when it takes time. So it takes time to save. So when waiting to waiting for this, believe me, possible for you to do this at home and you go back to your room. Is it possible to do this? So after you finish saving time, right? yes. Machine takes time. Okay, so the older machine it takes time. So after you say after you record your voice, right? You will see your voice tag on each side. You will see the voice tag. Wait for it to finish doing the job and it will show you. You can show your voice tag and then you save it as a video file. Okay, you, any of you have PowerPoint? Open your PowerPoint. Can I see your PowerPoint? It's open now. Uh, yeah, I will show you that there's a button there which says save. So when you save it, save it as MP4 file. Save as. <laughs> And then you close that. Right. Uh, this PC. Then you save as MP4. You can see MP4 video file. Yeah, wait Okay, done. Okay. So this is actually done. The reason why PowerPoint will take time is because it's saving your voice over each slide. Okay, so if you see. So now I'm going to do the saving. Okay. So once you have done recording your video, everything is ready. All you need to do is file, save as, save as, then it will save you as, and you can either save as, so if you are using Apple as a new version, you can save it as MP4 file, MP4, okay? MP4 will record it as video. So it will save your timing, everything in the file itself. <coughs> if you don't want to use, if you are using Windows, you can also save as WMV file. Okay. Both the WMV file and MP4, you can upload to YouTube directly. Okay. 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 Now, now remember something, when you are saving this right, for every 5 minute video, it may take about 10 minutes to save. You are saving your video and your audio file, sorry your video file and audio file. It may take time to process and save. So that's what you need to watch out for. So, okay, so now it's saving, can you see this? 
in saving this file. So when it is doing the saving, don't touch up, don't disturb it. Because it will save, save the file. Let it do it, it will do it. So, when you make your so let, when it's saving, right, you can try this at home. Oh. If you have any difficulty, you ask me tomorrow, I will help you to save. So, when any, any given time, you can come and ask me. But what you need to do is build up your YouTube channel. Because on your YouTube channel, you will store all the videos. The smart tool you have does not store, uh, store your lecture. It's not for storing lecture. You cannot store your video inside the smart UMS. You have to store it as a YouTube channel or a YouTube channel and insert a link into your smart UMS. So that's why it's very critical to have your YouTube account because all the YouTube will have your data stored inside and it will be linked back to smart UMS. You cannot you can upload into smart UMS, but it will take a lot of time and you use up the memory and resources of UMS. So what we do, we upload into YouTube and we save it. We save it into the smart pyramid system and the link. <coughs> Don't upload into the system. Otherwise, your resource will run out, right? The system resources will get over. We use up all the resources and all the lectures will lose out because all the data has space, memory and space. So, these are some of the videos. So, I, I basically make these videos for me. Right? So, you can make Okay, so these are videos. For example, this is a very important lab experiment. So this uh, lab, Amali, Amali has video recorded in the lab. So this Amali you can record in the system. They will, you can record your video. Of course, you will see advertisement on the side. But the main thing is your student get to view the video. So Dr. Leo also practices this. When we have our students, we don't give them the protocol. We show them the Amali in the YouTube. Then you have to list, you write your own protocol. So you can do many things using the video. With video teaching, okay, you help them to understand the different things. So sometimes, so I will show you how. You just wait for that thing to work. So on your view, there's a way to. I put everything, whatever I have, I put it. So, YouTube has one very interesting feature which is on an analytics. This analytics helps you to track how many students are watching your video. For example, if you have a class of 100 students, and then you told them watch this video and answer the question, you should be able to see your hit count increasing. <laughs> so if no one is watching your hit, you can see the hit counter will actually drop. It also allows you to find out who is watching your video globally. For example, one of the video I make is actually watch in mostly you have the high concentration in Asian country. So in Asian country, you know that audience is watching your video. So you can use this as a metric to find out how effective your teaching is. Sometimes you will put comment, you can receive the comment through the video. So this YouTube is actually allowing you to achieve that the KRA of UMS which is globalized online education. You want to come, you know right, what's the vision of UMS? Vision? What is the vision of UMS? We see. What is the vision of UMS? The, the, first, the first vision to become a... That's why if the MK auditor comes in last, if the MK auditor will come to you and tell me, he will call you and ask what is the vision of you. CC is your digital check check. So that's why, so one of the reasons why we do this globalized learning is because we want to achieve that. 
vision and mission of UMS. So we are going to become a globalized university. And that's what we want to implement and become the world very stable. So even though we are in Sapa and people say we are new university, we still want to reach out to that level. That's our aspiration. So that's what you do. So let's look at your view. So let's see if we say. So it's still saving, still saving the videos. So I will show you how to use YouTube upload. So can you see that icon right up there? Yeah, this one? Yeah. So once your file is in your folder, all we need to do is click it and upload your video into the system. We will try it now if we have time. I will just wait for it to convert and then I will try sure how it's done. You know why I record this? Because uh, I record everything I have seen because sometimes you can use it to insert in the video to create dynamism. Even though it's just a scene of a road, you can to insert. I can show you how to basically convert your lecture to a movie. You can make it into a movie type format. So your student, they don't even have to insert it. They can watch it as a movie. Using some we have other tools as well. So I can show you how to do it. Okay, so this is the same, same. <laughs> So what we have, you can see right, this is actually the lecture now, which is converted into a movie. The voice will be a little bit because I have to connect back to the audio, but basically the voice gets recorded on top of the movie. So now, you're, for example, you give your student your taklima. The first time they have, you have to tell them about table 3. So then you forgot. They say, oh, we don't understand. You just say refer to the video, reference the video. Okay, so now the video is already in the system. Now you need to upload into the YouTube. Okay, that's the last step. I will show you how it's done. Okay, so now my video is on the desktop. So it's here, right? So how you do it is you go to YouTube, you upload video. So YouTube now the new version of YouTube, you Facebook and live YouTube is like you can go in for live if you have But usually you don't go live because it's hard to maintain because of the bandwidth. So what we do is upload video. Okay, so it's upload. So once it's uploaded, you need to do two or three settings. Yeah. With solution. Resolution. Okay. Resolution you can adjust based on the YouTube. Usually you will load for the highest resolution, but let the user decide when to play. That's why I said if you are using iPhone X and whatever it is, high resolution file, you upload and then the student cannot download if you are in the kampung, your bandwidth is low, uh, then you have a problem with that. So that's why we prefer to use high bandwidth but give the uh, viewer a choice to view. You can select that in view. So usually if you are in the kampung, uh, watching the YouTube, finish your bandwidth. Uh, you can set it up for that. We will show that later, it's a little bit more detailed. But then uh, YouTube visit now resolution is automatically. It's loaded at your resolution, but you can download it based on your Okay, So now see, the video is done, the processing is done. Okay, now you need to do you need to do two or three settings for your, your video to become uh, Okay, so 
use your watch for great example the description of your video for your product. And this is one which you need to set, which is your hash. You know it's hashtag? You know it's hashtag, right? So this is the way you set up your hashtag. So example, you want to make UMS, then you put the university. So you can create as many hashtags as you want. Don't put Donald Trump. <laughs> you know how they use the video. Actually, this is actually a meta and you can put in some trending words and people will a trending word is if people reach your video, however, you get electronic, you get like this because you have this thing, you have this thing, sometimes people use it trending. So, once it's done, right, you need to look at your hashtag. Okay, and this is where you need to choose your license. So, the first part was uploading and doing the hashtag. This one is where you need to set your license. Standard YouTube license means <coughs> no one can download it, no one can remix, no one can reuse it. So they, YouTube has got a standard set of criteria. So if you want to make a video like something which is not accessible to others, so it's downloadable and editable, you can use standard YouTube license. However, we, as a public university, we like to encourage creative commons. So we use the creative commons licensing. So YouTube has a CCPY licensing policy. So once you upload, you can share. Other people can upload and watch your video. So they can upload, download, okay. Okay, and then you can. That's it. So videos are like so. After you finish visually, this is the practice. After I finish my lecture, I will see the system and it will upload. See, I did for the student and other group. So computation, that is the uh, bioinformatics, you can do this. This is using other software which Dr. Liu mentioned, the screen classified. So this is using bioinformatics sources. Okay, so you can, if you, go, if you want to project your whole screen, you can project as well. If you want your face to come there, you can make also. But usually in my practice, right, I observe that whenever you put a picture of the face, lecture of face, usually the traffic is low for that video. This may be because of the bandage. So if you put lecture of face, usually the traffic will drop. Based on just general observation, it's like that. So can you all do this? Can you all try and do? So if you all try and do, maybe tomorrow you can bring the link, to share the link with me or with Mr. Indian, you just share the link. And then I will show you how to put it in a repository. So tomorrow, this is today's homework. I don't overload with more and more software, just the basic one. Okay. So any question you have? So remember that we, right, Pusaj Kipapalajaran is a service center. We are supposed to serve you. So uh, our KPI is to make you achieve your KPI. So anytime you need help, you can ask and we will be there to help you regarding the videos and whatever you need to develop. <coughs> you have a question? Any questions? Understood? How do we? Okay. 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 You can, you can basically, okay. In the video, you have many, in the YouTube, you have many options. I managed to make it free to everyone to see, which is some people like, they want to spread yeah. So sometimes you can make it private video, no one else can see. So you mean once we upload it, you cannot delete it? You can basically, you can basically block it. You can unlist it, delete it. You can delete it. How we are moving forward? So you can delete it. Video. Okay, tomorrow I will show you how the system is which slow. You can actually make it one distinct video. Okay, uh, you record already, right? Uh, just press escape, escape like how you will exit the file. You wait for it to show. So this tool surprisingly has been inside the system for almost eight years, but nobody knows it exists there. It's inside the video.
Okay. So if you are shy, if you don't use your Swara voice is not, you feel your voice is not good, then there is actually another tool for text to speech. You can convert your voice into lady voice. I have made my video with lady voice. <laughs> so you can do that. But don't, don't do that. It's not too synthetic. Synthesizer. All these actually are used, these are actually NDK uh, running on the Chrome. You know Chrome? I will show you. If you all have, you all want to go, uh, give your, if you give me a five minute, I will show you. You all have to go? No. Okay. Give me five minute, I will show you how to use screen dust effect. <laughs> <laughs> you want to record your speed, right? You want to you don't use, for instance, you, you don't use PowerPoint, you want to use screen recording. Okay, you have to use an app. Okay, so this is called screen. So this is screen certified. So this one will record from your screen. Okay, so you just have to click here. So head to drop. So this one will work only on Chrome browser, not on Mozilla. You need to have Chrome browser. Okay, so now I'm checking it. Okay. So when you use screen justify, make sure that you have an active UMS account. Don't use with your personal account. Use with the UMS account because if you use your personal account, the memory I think is only 3 GB or something. So for, for Gmail, with UMS is infinite. Remember that. You can sync all your file, your whole desktop into the UMS mail. You can sync it. So you use some stuff. Okay. Okay, so can you see this what happened here? Can you see this icon here? Okay, can you see what happened here? The screen classify icon came here. So now the screen has been ready for record. So all I need to do is click here. Okay, and then it will record your desktop. So basically once you, this is similar to the, uh, the this one I should PowerPoint. But this one will record of your screen directly. You don't have to go into PowerPoint. You can record whatever. Suppose you are a programmer. Like when I want to teach my student bioinformatics, I don't ask them to come in the lab, I just use screen classify. They say I have how to change this line of code, I just say change it using this and I use screen classify. So no need to worry about uh, calling them in. So the is there, everything is there, and you have everything. And then you just click record. So I have record what, it is, what is there. So you can record the webcam if there is a webcam. See, so you can see your webcam here, you can record the desktop. So, record. Okay, so once you click share, you will start recording. Now it's recording your, your scene. So, you will say stop, and then you just record. So, you will record whatever you are doing until here, until you click stop sharing. Okay, so, it recorded the screen. It recorded whatever is going on on the screen. Directly. So, whatever is going on, it recorded. Now, this is actually a video file which you can upload to YouTube. So, screen Castify, anyone can use it. It's a very simple tool. But you can only record for, I think, 10 minutes. Right? Dr. Liu, how much is that? 3 version? 10 minutes? For screen Castify? Screen Castify, I'm not sure. Screen Castify, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So, you can record your lecture 15 minutes. So, the reason why we, they have made it short is because if you, if you notice, uh, Profong mentioned in the morning, right? Usually, YouTube video ever can be watched. If it's 10 minutes, we skip, skip, skip. So, students will not watch for more than 3 to 5 minutes. So, remember something because we, we, uh, when you record your lecture for, for a student, your lecture is 45 minutes. You cannot record 45 minutes, they won't watch. So, what you need to do is redesign your lecture so it will become short. So, for example, I am defining. Define 
what is DNA. So one, the one video, three minutes, just definition of DNA. Second, define what is enzyme. Second video. So you make each, they call it learning bytes, which is a short bytes of learning. In the middle, you can put your assessment. So you watch the first video, put assessment, second video, assessment. So that's how we work. So it's a different way from what our lecturers taught us earlier. There's no long lecture, it's all about <coughs> short achieving master. So this is being classified. There are many software which I can teach you about, so for that you come for the ID course. Okay, so this is just the beginning. So after this course, right, what your ILO should be, you should be able to develop just one video, just three minutes. Okay. So you develop and tomorrow you can share the link with the straight in, you pass to it. And then I'll show you how to upload it to OER. OER is the Open Educational Resources Repository. You can upload your video and your student wherever you can access it. And it will be part of your e-portfolio. You know what's e-portfolio? Actually, okay, like this. Have you heard of Anugra Academic Negara? So this is to motivate. You know what's Anugra Academic Negara? Okay, so basically, over a period of 10 years, you will collect your portfolio. The portfolio is your online lecture, your, your student reflection, and everything which you have done in terms of teaching and learning, this will go into an electronic portfolio and when you go apply for it, the, the Academy Negara Anugra, you will be at least, you will be evaluated based on your e-portfolio. Okay? So make sure that you develop your repository now because you are a young, after 10 years you can basically apply for that award. It's a big award. It's not the money. Money is second, it's the prestigious. Only four or five people actually get per year. That's, that's why you need to develop this portfolio. So, you have a question or you have no question, you have any question. Any question? If not, we just end for today. Thank you very much. So, tomorrow I'll see you all again.